time yesterday to lay. We did. You know, I think too many fish were caught. I caught the first fish. Oh, got a suntan. <laughs> that, that wasn't a fish. That was a fish. <laughs> it was two inches long. It yeah. was fish. It was uh, bait. I, 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 who caught the most fish? <laughs> fish is a fish. All right, check this out. So I caught a fish that was this big. My lure was this big. <laughs> Scripture, um, it's the same scripture I wrote Thursday night, read Thursday night, I wrote read, uh, Colossians 3, um, starting 1, it says, if then, if then you have been raised with Christ, anybody here born again? Yes. yes. To a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, and you've been raised from the dead? Yes. Killed that old man? Yes. Aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above in heaven, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, seated at the right hand of God, and set your minds and key have set on what is above the higher things, not the things that are on the earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. What are we supposed to set our mind on? Amen. The things that are above the higher things, right? For as this world 
is concerned, you have died. Amen? And your new, real life is hidden with Christ and God. Amen? So what are you worried about the things in this world for? Amen? What are you worried about the things in this world for? Right? The, the you know, uh, people, people in general, people that are Christians that come to church, people that call themselves Christians that come to church, are always finding excuses of why they can't be faithful in their tithe, why they can't give an offering, right? And the excuses, the typical excuses are, well, if if I were to return my tithe to God, I don't know, if, I, don't, I don't think I could afford groceries. I don't think I could afford gas. I don't think I could make rent, right? <laughs> Anyone who's not, anyone who's not, Mike, when you were not a tither at one point in your life, what were those? Were those pretty similar excuses? Right? All life. Well, you were worried about the things of this world, and not the things that are above, right? Typical excuses. I can't do this. I can't. I can't do that. Can I hurt your feelings? Then you don't love God. Amen. Does, can I? Can I tell you something about love? If you love God, it wouldn't matter if he told you, be faithful in your tithe and you're going to have to do without, you're going to have to wear rags and kill it, right? Right, right? I would still do it because I love God if yes. he told me that, right? He's so bold. He's so bold. I'm just saying, right? And then God said, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to be poor. You're going to have to wear rags. But God didn't say that. He actually says, do this and I will bless you. But we still don't want to do it. We still don't want to do it. Because <laughs> we're focused on the things of this world. <laughs> we're focused about how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. But when you put God first, you don't have to worry about anything else. Right? Don't worry about the things of this world. Focus on the things that are above. Get your mind right. I talk about the heart all the time, right? This is the act of the heart. But you got to get your mind right. Focus on the kingdom. Be kingdom minded. Amen. 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 Everybody got your tithe and offer lifted up. Pastor Mike. Father God, we thank you for the chance to be here today. God, I pray you just bless these tithes and these offerings, my God, and just continue to have it your way in your house today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everyone bring your tithe and offer.
is an attack. And I was thinking just the other day in my own mind how easily deceived people are because of the simple fact that I just watched this guy on this TikTok talk about tithe and how he was a faithful tither and this and that. And, you know, and, and then he, he stuck through his own studies. He decided that he didn't have to tithe anymore. Oh, and he has a good job and this and that. And he went through all this stuff of the, the, before the, the law, the, the Levitical law and Abraham and uh, bringing tithe into Melchizedek. And, and he went through the Mosaic law and the Levitif, Le, Levitical law where the, they, it was brought into the Levites for the carrying of the hat. He went through this and how the, it's no, you know, it's not for the New Testament and all this stuff. And I started thinking, wow, how interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. Isn't it? Right? And for a second there, I was, and then I thought, that's how the enemy works. Yes, yes, right, right, right. Something that I've studied for over 30 something years that has worked, yeah. that has proved. Yeah. In fact, that's the only place where God will say, prove him. Yeah. In the other place, you don't want to say, prove yourself, right? It don't work like that. But in this portion of scripture, so, you know, we're not trying to get your money. Don't tithe if you don't want to. Right? Live your life the way you want to. But there'll be, there'll be, you know, you, there's going to be fruit on either side. And, and I've seen the fruit on both sides. So live your life the way you want to. But remember that you're here today because supposedly you believe in God. And you believe in his word. Right? And if you're going to believe in his word, then I would say that we apply God's word in every aspect that we can. Yes, come on. Amen? So when the Lord begins to deal with you about something, you need to be uh, committed to it and you need to, need to be consistent in it. Yes. Yes. It's not a one-time thing. God don't work on that one-time thing. No. Amen? Yes. The enemy is always lurking, always oh. prowling, always looking for a way. <laughs> right? And, and, and the Bible says that he roams to and fro yes. throughout the whole earth. And, and, and then a, a part B or part C of portion of the scripture that goes on says that he is seeking whom he may devour. Right? right? Whom are steadfast. The word steadfast means firmly planted in the faith. So he's not necessarily roaming to and fro after what he's already got. Right? But he's looking, he's the, the greed that you experience and the covetousness that you experience and the, the lust that you experience are all characteristics and attributes of him. Yes. So he lives with that. That's, so, so those things that you begin to feel in, in, in your carnal mind and thoughts, those things are attributes of that original pride, that original fault. Those are things that are char char characteristically something of him. So... You say, well, why? Why does he do that? Why do we do the things we do? For the same lust, the same pride, the same... There's a, there's a plan. He has a carefully devised plan. And you say, yeah, but I don't. Well, you need to get one. Amen? Amen. For instance, my carefully devised plan is to make sure that I minister the word of Christ to everybody that I can in a, in a way that is both uh, life-changing and challenging. Now, the challenging part is where people get offended. Yes. The challenging part, right, is where you step on toes. Yes. The challenging part, and, and there's a lot of challenging parts to the gospel now because we are living in a complacent, indifferent yeah. world, an entitled generation. And it's, it's not just those that are younger than you. It's us, too. Yeah. We have been so blessed that we're not willing to go to war. Right? We don't want to, why, why mess things up? It's pretty good. Getting an extra 300 bucks a week for unemployment. Why go to work? Right? Why, why do this? Why, why get off welfare? It's free. Why get a job? Why, why do anything? Because you want to better your walk with God, to better your life, better the opportunity for your children and your children's children. Amen? I, I mean, I can, like that. Like, you know, all of y'all here today and all of you watching, can your child name all of the Disney princesses? <laughs> How many scriptures can they quote? Hello? Can they sing the Wop 
song. Walk, walk, walk. All right. I heard some of them singing at the fishing trip yesterday. You know what the walk song is? You don't want to. All right? You know, like, she won, like, an award for that song, right? That's nasty. It's just nasty. But you kids know all the words to the walk song. I hope not. Can they quote Iron Man, Thor, Captain America? Huh? They know a lot about Pokemon? Can they tell you about what's in style and what's not in style? I ain't wearing no shoes. What can they say about Jesus? What do they know about Satan? Huh? They know that they're really scared to get up and go to the bathroom at night because he's under their bed. What do they know about the pride flag? What do they know about what's going on in America? Right? What do they know? I mean, have you explained that to them? And not in a way that causes hate. No. But a way that it defines that there is a separation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come out from amongst them and be ye holy, even as yes. I am holy. Mm -hmm. That there is a separation from the things of this world that are, are destructive, yes. that will destroy you. Yes. They will destroy you. Do they know the difference? Do they really know the difference? Do they know? And we have a job. And some of us, we, we don't get to do that job because, you know, uh, we've made a mess of things and we're trying to fix it. You know, because God is in the tr trickle, the trickle down thing, you know, yeah. as the power of God manifests more in you and works more through you, then it's, it begins to trickle around and out of you and off of you. And, amen. And there is bitterness, right? There's bitterness because of things that we've done. But see, those are, that, that's when we realize that God has to do it. Amen. God has to do it. There are things that we're asking God to do, but God is doing some things in us first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the longer that we prolong, and you say, well, why? Why doesn't God just do that? Why does it, you know, because God's a God of faith. Where there is no faith, God is not pleased. Faith pleases God. A people of faith please God. Amen? So God is, like the enemy is roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. God's eyes are looking for faith. They're looking for people of faith, unmeasurable, un, 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 encompassed, uncovered, right? Uninhibited faith. Faith that will move mountains. Faith that will literally move his hand. Faith that will change lives. Faith that will step up and say, I'll go. I'll go to war. I'll fight this fight. In the end, you're going to realize that the fight that you fought was worth it. Right. To stand against tyranny and evil and to stand against sin and to stand against what is wrong. Amen? Amen. Now, you can quote me on this if you want to because everyone's listening. When we talk about sin, there has to be some defining characteristics that you need to study in the Word. Right? You need to get off the cussing, smoking, and chewing. You need to get out of the religious dogma. You need to get into the word of God and find out what is wrong. Like a, a wicked heart is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Things, that are, things that are leading people uh, down the wrong path away from God, those things are wrong. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. Unbelief and fear and doubt, those things are wrong. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we got to get our eyes off of the, the, the things that are so traditional that they turn people off. And we got to find in the Word of God what's going to turn people on. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Besides the walk song. We got to find what's going to work. And we're only going to do that not because we go to church, but because we begin to put the Word of God to practice in our own lives. Yeah. Amen? And as we do that, that's how the trickle works. That's how God begins to use you when you. When you get your, yourself to a place of surrender where God can use you. See, with me, I'm not willing to lose. Amen? I'm not willing to lose because there's too much at stake. There's too many lives that are weighed in the balance. There's too many people. And, and, and you're not going to get it by trying to force it, argue about it, fight with it. You're going to get it when you surrender to God 
and begin to let God do what God does best. Yes. Amen? Amen? You can love the hell out of somebody. You really can. You can minister. The word minister, you can serve. You can, you can all the time while telling them the truth. But you got to be careful how you tell people the truth. Because, you know, there's, there's a portion of Scripture in the book of 2 Samuel uh, Starts in verse, it starts in chapter 18, 19, I believe. I, yeah. So David, you know, he's anointed king, and he looked, he one day, when he should be going out to battle, when he should be going to war, yes. warriors, yeah. right? It was a season. The Bible says it was a season when the king should be going to war. Yeah. But David stayed home. He stayed back. He was comfortable. Right. It was all good. He sent his army out to do the battle. I'm good. It's all good. Bring me some pieces. You know, and, and uh, he's up on his rooftop. Yes. He looks out and he sees this hot Bathsheba yes. out there taking a bath. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. He sends for her. Sends for her. She comes over. The Bible says, in, tells that he ends up laying with her. She gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. She gets pregnant. And so in order to cover his tracks, he has her husband sent out to the Russian front. And he gets killed, Uriah. Yeah. And, and, and so the Lord, so David's living with this. It's all good. It's all covered. I covered my tracks. He's dead. She's mine. We're going to have a kid. Yeah. I'm the king. But God sends this guy named Nathan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can be Nathan. God sends Nathan to talk to David. He goes over, King David, I need to tell you a story. There's this man that's got all these sheep, and then there's this poor little family over here, and this poor little family, they only got one sheep, and they got kids and everything. And this man with this whole bunch of sheep, he don't like that this guy is over here. He wants his sheep. Yeah. He's got all the sheep he wants, but he wants his sheep. Hello? Yeah. So he, he, goes, he, he goes in with a sword, and he kills the guy, takes his sheep. Y'all know the story, right? Yes. Yeah. David said, that's terrible. Who is that guy? Let's have his head cut off. Nathan said, it's you. There's a way to tell a story that won't get your head cut off. Right? Because if he'd have went right in there just saying, I know what you did. I, know, I see you. I see I see how you live and I see what you do. No, you've got to know how to tell the story. That's going to impact your lives. And God wants you to tell the story with your life. Thomas, the Lord's been dealing with me about you, man. Yesterday on the drive home, the Lord spoke to me. Stand up for a minute, man. Yeah. Put your hands on him. Right now. Somebody put your hands on him right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord spoke to me about you. Yes. Your greatest desire, man, is to reach your children. You want to have that relationship. Yes. And yesterday, the Lord told me that he's completing a work in you. And that what seems like is going to be impossible, God is going to show you the impossible. And he's going to begin to open those doors. You're going to come through this victorious. What the courts say and what everybody's trying to say that's got you going through what you're going through, God is going to open that door for you. Amen? You understand? God is going to do the impossible for you. You grab hold of that and hang on to it. And don't believe the lies of the enemy. You, you're not subject to the law. You're not subject to the world, I should say. You're subject to the Almighty. And guess what? So is all of those circumstances. Subject to the Almighty. And not only did he talk to me about when I was driving home yesterday, because when I was driving home yesterday, and I was talking to you about how we got to stay obedient, I said, yeah, I'll get around to that. The Lord dealt with me last night and said, no, you tell him today. You tell him today. You encourage him today. He needs to be encouraged today. He needs that word today. Not tomorrow. He needs it today. You can take that to the bank. Tomorrow morning, you well, come on. He needed to hear it today. Tomorrow morning, you have court. And then...
But we take glory in what God has done. Yes. Amen? Yes. And what God is doing. Yes. What God is going to do. Yes. Can you say amen? Yes. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you can stand for the reading of the word if you want to. I'm just now starting to preach. Y'all better oh, come on. Yeah. 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 Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That followed them. That rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye adulterers, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now let all those, excuse me, now let all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition, 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 upon whom the ends of the world are come. You may be seated. I believe with all of my heart that Satan has made a plan like never before to corrupt this generation, to stop the church, stop the kingdom of God, to stop the power of God. Everything nasty, ungodly, vile that you could imagine is not only available but encouraged. I said it's not just available, it's encouraged. Do you understand? It's encouraged. It's encouraged. And everything that is good and holy and acceptable in the eyes of the Lord is discouraged. Hello? We are, our, our children are being uh, educated with things that are not necessary to be educated with in public school. Amen? I don't mean just the four R's, but the, the, the history of Islam... Uh, the history of, of, of uh, the LGB huh? the drag queens well just all the history of where all of this the, these things have nothing to do with education they have to do with the home they have to do with indoctrinating amen what is not being taught is prayer right what is not being taught is the history of Christianity what is not being taught now and you need to realize that this is a, a, a perverted plan of the enemy. Yes. So don't get butt hurt if you're one of those people that, you know, well, you know, I'm offended. He said this. He said, if you get offended, you know, yay. So uh, the music is totally sick, talking, boasting about sexual explicit things. And, 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 and you know, it, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter because it's a good beat and you can dance to it. Right? No. no, right? But it also desensitizes the mind. You understand? Yeah. It desensitizes the mind. The Bible is very clear that Satan roams to and fro on the whole earth, seeking whom he may devour, which is in Job chapter 1, right? We know it. He is seeking to devour. You understand? Looking for victims. Yes. Those whom are easily yes. duped. Yes. Those who are easily deceived. Those who are easily enticed. Those who are easily enticed. And he is a master at enticing us. You understand? Because he appeals to what we really want anyway. He knows what you really want, so he will entice you with what you really want. <clears throat> Temptations can come at any time. And, and, and that's why we must all be alert spiritually. And if you fall, get back up. But don't just keep falling thinking that it's acceptable that I live this way because, you know, I choose that and it's my thing and it's my life. And it is. And you can do that. 
You can do that, but you can't straddle the fence with God. It's really worse. It really is. It's worse to be fake, playing religion, than it is to be in the world. It really is. It, it would be better just to be in the world. I mean, because at least you can enjoy it. I mean, at least you can enjoy the world because that's all you're ever going to have. But at least you can enjoy it. I mean, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, if you're, if you're not going to serve God, serve the world. You can enjoy that. But I learned how to enjoy serving the Lord so much more than I enjoy the world. I get so much euphoria and, and so, I get so high and so, I, I get to feel so good when I do the will of the Lord. When I see the will of God happening, when I see the results, when I, when I see the blessings of God in my own life, when I realize that, you know, my children don't have to go out and do dope and hustle the streets. And my, my children don't have to steal and lie and be deceptive. And my grandchildren, they can go swimming in their swimming pool that God blessed their papa with. They don't have to. Are you hearing me? They can go on a men's fishing trip and have a good time. Rather than having to, you know, worry about who's going to come and, 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 and shoot the windows out trying to get their dope money. If they got any windows. Colossians 3 and 5 tells us that we are to mortify, put to death, yeah. our members which are upon the earth. Because fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil desires, covetous, covetousness, idolatry. These things are they're, they're, they're the natural responses in our flesh. But we're not called to be to live in the natural. We're called to be supernatural. Yes. We're not called to be just, you know, the creatures that the world created us to be, but we're called to be new creatures. Yes. We're not called to be as we were born. We're called to be born again. Amen. We were all conceived of sin, man. Yes. Next time somebody says, I was born that way, say, I was too. Yes. We were all conceived of sin. Yes. That's why we have to be born again. Yes. You understand? That's why we have to be born again, all of us. We're all going to struggle with temptation. Even us, even, even us people that have been saved a long time. Even you holy people. <laughs> temptation is not only orchestrated by Satan, though. And that's where we get, you know, we, we, we always... We want, to, we want to blame this and blame that. And let's, let's learn today. I want, you to, I want you to learn something today. The source to sin is threefold. In James chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, tells us that temptation can come from our own lust, our own desires, which will try to entice us. It will, it will, uh, uh, it will offer us pleasure. It will offer us things. It will offer us things that our flesh desires. Matthew first, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, tells us that Jesus was led up to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So we're drawn away of our own lust and we're tempted by the devil. There's two already. Right? Number three, the third way to be tempted is, is by the world system. I want to be a millionaire. I want to hit the lottery. I want to be this. I want to be that. I'm badass. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> I don't care. It, to me, that ain't a bad word. Right? You know what a bad word is? Shut up, stupid child. That's a bad word. Right? That's a bad word. I, I mean, maybe I think different than a lot of other church people, but I'm not a church person. Amen? I'm a Christian. Are you hearing me? So, this world system is under Satan's authority. Amen? He is the prince of the power of the air. He is the God, little g, of this world. So we are at war spiritually. We are, we are wrestling, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Sometimes we think we're wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're not. We're wrestling against something spiritually wicked. Right? And it's not who you were created to be. And what I mean by that is, is this, is that we will exalt ourselves above 
the heart and mind of God too. When we make decisions based on our own wants, desires, and lusts. But when you surrender to God, then God becomes your God. When you're born again, then you're that new creature. When you're born again, when you're birthed into the kingdom of God, then you begin to see things in a different light. Yes, yes. It's not easy. We're bombarded day and night. Man, I, I haven't watched the news. I even watch it occasionally just to keep up with everything. And last night I decided I was just going to turn the news on for a, just for a minute. I turned the news on. And the first thing that pops up is just all the things that are going on in Sacramento and Government and Beth goes, turn it off. <laughs> the eye gate and the ear gate are such great tools for the enemy. Because when you see this stuff, you begin to fear, you begin to doubt, you begin to wonder. So maybe times it just starts out with wondering. And then it, gets, then it becomes something deeper and deeper and deeper. But that really is working on transforming you back to what you used to be, thinking how you used to think. This world system. Why did I start this message warning about the devil's plan to corrupt this generation with a fervor and an intense action? Because people are becoming more and more self-indulgent with every generation, every decade, every, it's like, you know, I've noticed that with kids and then grandkids and grand and parents and grandparents, I've noticed the difference in how they think. Hello? Yeah. You see, it's always been that way because it has always been declining. It has always been. <laughs> they thought Elvis was wicked. He was. That hurt your feelings? Because <laughs> he pulsated on stage? Now they do it naked. Now they back up to the camera twerking naked. Men, women, it don't matter. Right? Yesterday, my daughters went to the red tree, big tree, what's it called? Redwood forest? Trees? Big trees, big trees in Reinhardt out of Oakland, and she came home, and they went to San Francisco, through San Francisco and all that, they were seeing all this, and I said, and she said, you know, they have an equestrian park over there. I go, it's awesome. I've thought about going there before. And why didn't you go? I said, because in the equestrian park, you have to pick up your horse poop, or you'll get a ticket and get a fine. So I don't want to go there, because I don't want to pick up horse poop. Yet in San Francisco, they poo on the sidewalks. And it's okay. <laughs> and Brother David, man, they can walk into the pharmacy over there and they can steal drugs and not be arrested as long as it's under $950. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're shut down. If I was a drug addict, Come on, hello? As long as they don't use a weapon and you're not allowed to stop them. <laughs> hello? You're not allowed to stop them. They can walk into the pharmacy. They can hop over the counter. They can get the drugs, put it in their whatever, and they can leave. As long as it's under $950, they won't even be chased or apprehended or searched for. Huh? I'd stop them in the face. That's right. David knows what I would do. All the Walgreens are shut down there because of that. Now that's just one city. You know, we have several cities. Even our cities. Your city. Huh? Antigua Walmart. Antigua Walmart. Your cities. Stockton, Modesto, Tracy, Antigua, Lathrop, all these. But because we're under a constant attack. And the demoralization is coming at us more and more and more, and the more accepting we are of it, and I know that we don't want to be old-fashioned. Our grandparents, uh, 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 they were right. <laughs> they were right. You understand they were right? My dad used to tell me all the time, son, you shouldn't drink. It's going to ruin your life while he was drinking. <laughs> Like, well, I'm 
love him and drink more than him. Yeah. And it ruined my life. Just like you said. Yeah, drugs. I mean, all this stuff, it'll, it can run, it will ruin your life. Yeah. And if, if we don't take a stand against this stuff now, why did I start this? Because people are becoming more and more self-indulgent. And many are accepting this life. And we don't want people to accept this life because that's all it offers is the world. Right. And hear me. If you don't stop the enemy from invading your home, if you're not going to stop the enemy from invading your family, if you're not going to stop the enemy from invading your environment, and from attacking your children mentally, socially, spiritually, then, it, then, then, then it's all in vain. What is Christianity all about if it doesn't impact? If, I mean, if, if it's just about you, right? Then it's all in vain. The church was established to be built upon the revelation of in Matthew 16, you realizing, waking up and understanding first off who Christ is. Yes. And secondly, that, that, that the church is being built by Christ. Yes. Amen. Right. Who, who do you say I am, Peter? Thou art the Christ. Well, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But the Spirit of God has revealed this. The Holy Spirit revealed this unto you. Right? And, and, and Peter which means Petra, rock, upon this rock will I build my church. We just talked about the rock being in the Old Testament, but we're also talking about upon what rock? Upon God's people, upon you, upon you, upon God's people, upon those that he has named, those that identify on this rock, on people. Jesus said, I will build my church. Who will build it? For those of you that think we're building the church, I will build it. God will not build upon rotten stuff. You understand? He ain't going to build upon rotten stuff, man. That's why the church is having so much struggle. Because, And you say, well, they're not. I mean, some of them got 6,000 members. And they're just as filthy as the world. I'm not saying all of them are. But, and so are we. That's why we have to get delivered. That's why we need to get set free. I mean, I'm just not, well, I believe in heaven and hell. I also believe in grace. But I don't think that grace is just God's indulgence just to be no. stupid. No. Just to live stupid. No. Amen? Amen. A firm, strong, lasting belief. Not a cheap knockoff. Upon people that are solid, sincere, called out of this world. And whether, whether you think that you are or not, you are. You're not like you used to be. You're not doing what you used to do. You're not being deceived like you used to be deceived. Right? You may be working programs and steps, and that's all good. Whatever it takes to get your mind right, your heart right. Amen? Amen. But with that, please, please, please give your life to the Lord. Yes. Let God begin to do a work in you. Let him begin to establish. Let him begin to get the rotten stuff out and the good stuff in because... He can't build upon rotten. No. And if you know, if you're anything like me, if the rotten stays in there, the rotten's going to begin to manifest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and no matter how long I've been away from the bad, if the rotten's still in, I find in my life, after all these years, the reason I said 35 years of being saved, because after 35 years, I still find things in my life that can lead me in the wrong direction if I'm not mindful, if I'm not alert. If I'm not, hello, if I don't capture those thoughts, if I don't capture those thoughts, if I don't capture them and, and, and give them to the Lord, and sometimes they are, listen, relentless. Satan and the flesh are relentless. There are times when we are weak. There are times when we are struggling. Listen, it don't matter. You can be, you can be mad or sad or hungry. It, well, there are just times when we are in a weakened state. I have a, uh, you know what? I need a candy bar. I'm having low blood sugar because I'm about to kick your butt. <laughs> Whatever. <Yes>. Just. <laughs> what does that mean? That we're to be transformed by 
the renewing of our minds, transformed. We are in the most in intense spiritual warfare that I, I have ever experienced. Yes. And most people are not seeing it. In fact, most people are, are welcoming it. They're just like, seriously. Like, I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't say most people, but a large, a large number of people are just wel welcoming. You know, it's just our next, we're evolving as a country, and it's just our next phase. Yeah. You know what? Buy a gun. You're going to need it. You're going to stay a Christian. Yeah. No, I'm telling you. If you're going to stay a Christian, buy a gun. You're going to need it. That's scary, Pastor. You're trying to scare us. Just telling you what the Word of God said. We don't believe in guns. But then find somebody that does. And live next to them. Guns are dangerous. Yeah, they're scary. Amen? They'll protect you. They'll keep things from happening to you. See, we're living in some dark times. We are living in a time when they want to defund the police. Who's going to protect you? Who's going to protect your property? Who's going to protect your home? Who's going to do that? You know Kung Fu? I once shot a guy that knew Kung Fu. I didn't really. He thought I was going to and he left. No time to play. No. There's no time to play. In fact, the world. Can I tell you the truth? The world needs to hate you. Yeah. If the world doesn't hate you a little bit, right? You are the salt of the earth. But if you have lost your flavor, your savor, if if you're not being salty, that's what they say about people. I see people like, man, he's got an attitude. He's a little salty, isn't he? <laughs> right? I mean, Lee, are you a little salty? Well, that's wrong, right? I'm salty as hell. People get around me like, he's salty. So I should say I'm salty as heaven. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. If you're not salty, and this is the thing, Satan is in your face, and he's singing, and he's dancing, and he's laughing, and he's twerking. While we struggle with fear, doubt, unbelief, survival. Yes. We're just struggling with survival. Right. And he's in your face and he's in your children's face. Right. Yeah. Here's what you don't understand. As we release them into the public school system and things like this, then what is popular is what they're going to be consumed by. You understand? Yes. Right now, not to hurt anybody's feelings, I don't know how many young you have kids in school, but right now, and I'm not bashing, right now, your children are gonna be are gonna be challenged into homosexuality like never before by their peers. Remember when we were challenged by this is not good, you don't like it. It's not I'm not gonna do it, man. It's not good. No, mom said it, it will fry my mind. I'll become a, you know, this and that. Right? That's the thing right now. The thing right now is that they are being challenged by their peers because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular, acceptable. Yes. Yeah. And, and I don't think we should hate on people. No. I don't know if I get wrong. Get me wrong. I'm just saying that right now it is an epidemic. Yes. You understand? I don't know how a half of a percent of population of the population can have so much power. It's the devil. Right? It's Satan. So what do you do? I have some problems with my child uh, at Sierra High School. Where's my daughter, Kristen? Let me say this. I'm not going to say 
I had some problems. It wasn't to do with homosexuality, but it was to do with other things. It was to do with gangs and, and drugs and all this. Right? Huh? Did I add to it? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, in her, in her senior year, I said, you're never going to school there again. And I yanked her out of that school. Amen? A few years later, I had another daughter that was going to that school, and I started. She started having some issues there with other. And guess what? I yanked her out of that school. Hello. I had another daughter that went to that same school, started her freshman year. It lasted a week. Guess what? I yanked her out of that school, and I sacrificed. Beth and I sacrificed. We sat, do you understand? We sacrificed. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't have Burger King. We couldn't, we had to say, we couldn't drive new cars. We could, because we were going to put our kids through Christian school. They were going to learn scripture. My daughter that, that I yanked out of school, uh, my Kristen, I couldn't afford to put her in Christian school, but I sent her to a country school way out and we drove her way out. And we let her stay at grandma's house way out in the country. <laughs> And my daughter, Audra, we put her in Brookside Christian Academy, and she became the worship leader. Yeah. Come on. She became the prom queen. <laughs> Hello? She was, I preached at that school. They had preachers come in every day. At, they had service. They had what they called a chapel. They had church every day. They had church every day. He said, well, that's just, I, that's, that's. No, listen, do you see my daughters yes. worshiping yes. God? Yes. Yes. Amen. It was worth the sacrifice. For yes. those of you who say, I'm just not willing to pay that price. Mm -hmm. It's so worth it. Yes. And God made a way. I had, to, I had to work and sell things and buy things and preach. and I had to do all kinds of things to make sure they could do that. To make sure that I could, and, and it cost me. It cost me lots of fun. It was worth every bit of it. Everything that I've laid down is worth every bit of it. Paying the price was worth it. Brother David, you were a teacher there. Well, you were a teacher at... Uh, see, my nephews, who we, were we all ministers, Jordan, Joel, Jake, and J.L., Brother David was one of their teachers. They're all ministers. They all love the Lord. They're all in the ministry. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying to you? Because their parents sacrificed to get them away from a world system that was corrupting their minds. And it was worth it. In the long run, it was worth it. At the time, it was like, oh, how are you going to pay them? worth it. So, you know, you may think, oh man, I got a good education system. When I went to school, it was just... You got to pay attention to what we teach too. You got to pay attention to what they're teaching. Yeah. Right? Yeah. While we struggle with all this, we can change all of it. I'm not giving, I'm not telling you to go broke putting your kids in Christian school, but it would be worth it. Yeah. And you say, well, it, if Austin Grove, if they were getting it at home, it would be, if they would have been getting it at home, but I was too busy. Yeah. I was guilty. I was running. I was doing this. I was working. I was working. And, and I was I was driving a truck and preaching the gospel and, and, and selling hay and delivering Christmas trees, and I was doing everything I could to make a living. Huh? I wasn't doing drugs anymore. But I had missed out on something really valuable by not making the right decisions. And when, it, when I figured out, when, they, when their lives were falling apart and I realized what was being taught, what was happening, like, you're never going back to public school again. You're going to go work. I'll teach you at home. They can teach you. 
you're going to be exposed to the gospel as much as possible. Amen? Amen? Yes. So today, I don't know where that last part came from. The Lord really dealt with me. That's right. It came from Jesus. Did you hear that? It came from Jesus. He said that. Where did that come from, Mom? I'm closing. It's worth it. It really is worth it. If you can do it at home, and you will, then that's awesome. If you can take that time and direct your children, but some of y'all can't even direct yourselves. So, my challenge to you is that it's time to get all ugly up in the devil's face, because the devil's getting ugly all up in our face. Yeah. Right? He really is. He's getting all ugly up in our face, man. It's just like getting all up in our face. And 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 and, and he doesn't care. And we look powerless. I mean, now we now the spirit-filled church is a mockery. They're mocking God. They're mocking like, oh, where's your God now? Where's where you know where and, and people are falling away. Like the Bible said, there's gonna be a great falling away. That's why that's why you see. Like after this COVID thing, the church was full for two weeks. Yeah. Then all of a sudden it's like, ah, it's all good. I don't have to go to church no more. I'm better now. We forget pain and fear. Right? I forget the road. I try to remember. I forget how destructive drugs and alcohol were. Huh? They were so destructive. Ruined my marriage. Ruin, ruin my marriage, ruin my life, literally. Forget. That's how the temptation works. Now I don't, I don't, I don't do drugs and stuff. But the temptation, I don't even have temptation for that. But temptation works that way. It'll always be there. All it takes is the right. Huh? That's why in the steps, right? They tell you in the steps, the programs and stuff. I've never did the programs, but. It's always there. The enemy is always, always, always. Whatever your vices are or were, those are things that even though you're delivered, <laughs> just ask Pastor Mike, listen, let, let me be, this is the honest, this is the honest truth. If you, if, 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 it, if it wasn't for God, and you know how destructive drugs and stuff are, if it wasn't for God, what would you be doing right now? You'd be a prisoner dead, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm sure. And and if if that was if the Lord was taken from our lives right now, we'd go right back to the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that flesh is, right? That's that human nature. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. We need God, and that's why we need continued, constant, constant exposure to the Holy Spirit. Constant exposure to the Word. And that ain't. Just because you come to church and get to preach you, that's because you preach it. Yeah. Constant exposure. Always remind me. Sometimes I have warfare on my hands. Because I'll call somebody on the carpet. They, we don't like that. You like it? I don't like it. I get mad. I get mad when I get woke up. Anybody else get mad when you get woke up? Yeah. Like you're super tired. You're just laying down and like, hello. Oh, man. <laughs> That's what happens when the flesh gets caught. Come on. <laughs> Amen. I have to go to the doctor today for a PET scan. You know, every three months they do a PET scan because, you know, they diagnosed me with molecular lymphoma. They lied to me about that. But no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. The Lord has delivered me and healed me of so many things. I had hepatitis C, healed 100%. I had atrial fibrillation and a heart valve problem, healed 100%. To, they took me off the medicines. They had me on medicine for 10 years, took me off. But there's nothing, we can't find it, it's not there no more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, 
And uh, I'm believing the Lord the same thing for this. In yes. fact, it hasn't shown up. They, they, it's a blood thing. Uh, it hasn't shown up. But it shows up in the blood, but it doesn't show up in my body. Amen? Yeah. Well, how many of you believe with me today? Yeah. 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 Same thing. I'll be getting a call from the doctor tomorrow saying it's all good. Yeah. All good. Stood on you before, God. Lord, help us to go forward, to move forward, to press toward the 